بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اور آنریبل گیسٹ ڈیلیگیٹس فرام سینٹرل ایشین ریپبلکس جنرل جعفری پریزیڈنٹ آف سینٹر آف گلوبل اینڈ اسٹریٹجک اسٹڈیز مسٹر شوکت رین جنرل سردار جنرل آفیسرز امبیسڈرز ایکسلنسیز ڈسٹنگوش گیسٹ لیڈر جنٹلمین السلام علیکم اینڈ گڈ آفٹر نون فار می دس از ریئلی اے گریٹ ڈے دیٹ وی ہیو کم ٹوگیدر اینڈ وی ہیو کم ٹوگیدر to collectively carve a way forward for future which is so much common. On this great day, let me also welcome all the delegates which have come all the way to us. Thank you very much for coming over and to all of you from Pakistan and from people of Pakistan, we wish you a very happy Nowruz. <laughs> My special thanks to Center for Global and Strategic Studies, to the entire team, Mr. Khalid and all smartly turned out people around who have done, who have done a lot of hard work. Special thanks to National Security Division. Very well done. And it's all about you. Thank you for coming over. Thank you very much. A little before, when my friend and a brother, former Vice Prime Minister of Uzbekistan, Mr. Ikramov, when he was sitting here, he said, how did you conceive this idea? This is a great idea of bringing us together. So I whispered in his ears, this is a love story. So actually, ladies and gentlemen, this is a love story, a love story that is waiting in our own palms, a story that we hold ourselves. But to tell you how did we mark the beginning, obviously. I don't want to take any credit for anything. All of you, all of us, Alhamdulillah, are some great people. So ideas, the vision of the future, we do perceive, we do discuss. To me, when I went to Central Asian Republics, I went to Tajikistan and Uzbekistan. And obviously, my thought process that I live with, I was looking forward how to connect ourselves. So I came across a journalist who had the maximum experience of Central Asian Republics. He was coming and going. And I happened to meet him, Mr. Aga Ikrar. So I called him over, he's sitting here, could you please rise, Aga sir? So he's the one. So I called him over and I said, let's, let's connect it. So immediately, all the knowledge that he had about the Central Asian Republics, so he tried to, you know, discuss that with me. And then, 
CGSS. And that is how we all are together here. So how do I begin my love story today? What do I tell you? I think let's proceed with the love story. This is our love story. This is the beginning of our love story. That's what we are blessed with. And then we are so lucky to have this kalama to ourselves. And it doesn't end here. We are followers of our Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah peace be upon him, who has taught us that how to live, how to co-live with all those who are from other religions as well. So our history, our culture, our education, our civilization, all that we have has a greater depth. And then, he didn't leave us nameless. Of course, we are Muslim, but he didn't leave us nameless. He gave all of you a beautiful homeland. So all of you have beautiful countries. And when you talk of Pakistan, we were also lucky that in this entire world he didn't leave us nameless. He also made us Pakistani. He gave us a motherland. So all of us have so much of similarities. And in Pakistan, in Pakistan's constitution, in our flag, we kept the right of all those who are with us but may not be Muslims. See, we gave them a white color. So that is how large hearted people we are. And now I was thinking that on behalf of bright, brilliant, and bold and beautiful Pakistanis, we should introduce pictorially Pakistan to all our guests who have come from Central Asian Republics because they might not be able to go all over. So I have some pictures which will show you the kind of country that we are. He is our father of nation. Can you please dim the lights, please? And this is where, in Karachi, he is buried. This is where we decided to make Pakistan. And then, all the pictures that you can see, I will click for you. And you can see for yourself, the kind of country we are. I have been to your beautiful countries. God has blessed you immensely and we are no less. Just look at this beautiful landscape. We have glaciated region where we can have minus 50 temperature.
this is our architecture we also have deserts where it could be 50 plus so such a versatile landscape that we have This is our beautiful region, Lodistan. This is Gavada. We do have a princess of hopes and sphinx. We have wonderful armed forces who know how to fight. They have given a great sacrifice and so are the people of Pakistan. Very professional Air Force. We have our daughters as pilots. A good navy, professional navy. We are good horsemen. Our girls, daughters, they play cricket, hockey, squash, billiards. This is how is there a reflection of our village life. This is how girls play there. I wonder if you have marble. Gilli Danda, Tipu Garam, Latu, Karambod, Ludo, Kites in Uzbekistan. I know you eat food like this. You also have naan, you also have samosa, kebab, saji, sweets. I wonder if you can do this. These are birds, animals. We do have snow leopard, deer. We are quite fashionable people. We can have embroidered shoes. These are the bangles, our daughters, they wear the caps, embroidered caps, ornaments. This is how our daughters use hina on special occasions. We carve our decorations. Also we paint our decorations. We have rich carpet industries. And just see how do we decorate our buses. Like we are going to vet them. <laughs> there are some slides which have already been shown to you by my secretary. That only shows that we work together. But I'll just go over them. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's establish our relationship. Pakistan and Central Asian Republics first. So what do we look at? This is a very famous proverb. In all other parts of the world, light descends upon earth. But this is only half. The other half of the proverb is from the holy Samarkand and Bukhara it ascends. So this is part of the love story. Sufi movements like the Naqshbandi, Qadriya, followed in the Indian subcontinent, originated from <coughs> Central Asia. 
and in our relationship, how we feel about you is that after Mecca, Medina, Central Asia is the third <coughs> seat of Islamic learning and spirituality. This is how also we look at you and just look at it, how closely we are located. And we consider you the most important region of 21st century. Pakistan and Central Asian Republics are brotherly countries sharing very cordial bilateral relationship. And Pakistan is proud to have wonderful relationship with all of you. We have a common history and values along with a vision of peaceful, progressive and prosperous future. It definitely have a past which we have shared. And let me just highlight because this is, I'm talking of the love story. Now let me refer to you. I'm referring to erstwhile USSR. Today, like I said, Russian Federation is a great country. And we're looking towards them for a greater relationship. But I'm referring to history. But when this, in 1979, it happened, did Pakistan do anything? Was it because of Pakistan's doing? Surely no. But just think of it. If Pakistan did not stand with Afghanistan, could there have been any Afghanistan today? It was under a massive invasion. If Pakistan did not stand with Afghanistan, US and West, could the world still be bipolar or unipolar? Of course, USSR had its economic as main reason. But what it faced in Afghanistan was also one of the major reasons. If Pakistan, instead of fighting along with Afghanistan, US and the West had offered a trade corridor to USSR at that time, could USA have been the only superpower today? If USSR did not, had not been dismembered, could the Berlin Wall fall? <coughs> Germany owes its unification to Pakistan. And if USSR was not dismembered, could so many Central Asian Republic, republics emerge? There are 15 countries, including Russian Federation, who emerged on the map. So as part of our shared past, this is our relationship with US, Afghanistan, Germany, and more so, <coughs> I repeat more so, Central Relation Republics. And that is the gentleman, ladies and gentlemen, the character and role of Pakistan in the recent history. So this is our relationship with you. And now let me just touch, touch, that is past. What is happening in the future? What are the global trends of power politics? We all know that the world order which had come around after World War II started to fade away with dismemberment of USSR. U.S. emerged as a sole superpower. But this is fading. The world is now changing. 
This order is also under stress. The world is now recalibrating, reorientating. The economy and the security are altering the world. How? Let me tell you that very recently US has declared China and Russia as revisionist states. The states who are looking for to revise. This is how US looks at these two countries. North Korea and Iran have been declared as rogue states. India has been declared as strategic partner and a net security provider. If you relate this competitive thought, what are the common challenges which are emerging in our region? These are the common challenges, ladies and gentlemen, that the great power rivalries are being aggravated in Asia. China and Russia are taken as challengers. They are called as revisionists. And the rebalancing Asia policy of US is at play. Afghanistan is instable. Afghanistan in the future is to be used to checkmate Central Asian Republics. Russia, China, Pakistan. Again, it is rebalancing Asia policy. The presence of Daesh is threatening the region. That is how it is growing and being nurtured in Afghanistan. <coughs> Narcotics are flourishing. <coughs> they have reached the economy of 130 billion. Pakistan continues to fight the terrorism. Iran is under stress. Turkey has just escaped the coup. There is a turmoil in the Muslim world. India is being empowered as a net security provider, as I already mentioned, and being prepared as a strategic counterweight to China. Just look at the asymmetry between India and Pakistan, the difference of defense budget. And to, to catch up on this, Pakistan has started to over rely on its nuclear capability. Is that good thing for the region? There is a two front situation coming up for Pakistan. There is a two front situation coming up for India. And there are maximum disputes in the region with no dispute resolving mechanism. So we have a fragile region. This is our common challenge which we have to Correct. We have to come together to do this. This is our common threat that our region has been all time being treated or being handled. Let me tell you our story. What have we gone through? We were engaged in Fatah. We were engaged in Balochistan. We were engaged in Karachi. A widely dispersed responses that it needed. Hadn't we succeed, succeeded? Perhaps we could be like this. But this Pakistani nation, the armed forces, everyone said no to it. And we fought back. We fought back these challenges. And this, I am referring to Fatah after 9 11. There were areas where we had no control. 
There were areas where we had contested control. We have fought all the way through. We have launched the biggest counter-terrorism operations known as Serbia's. What, a, what an enemy you are, that you are scared of us, the children. We will avenge, but by way of education. So Fata, Lochistan, Karachi. Alhamdulillah, we have already succeeded. But we are endeavoring to build on our success. Now somewhere, we are blamed. This is such a prolonged war, such a perpetual war, that there are misunderstandings which occur. When there's a fissure within the campaign, within the alliance, the misunderstandings occur. We are blamed that we are playing a double game. Pakistan is supporting and providing safe havens to Taliban's and Akhanis. But just look at it. U.S. is blaming us that we are siding with Taliban's and Akhanis. And Tariq Taliban Pakistan is fighting with Pakistan that we are siding with infidels. So in other words, both are blaming us. We are under blame from both the sides. And it looks as if we are children of lesser God. The stronger they have their narrative, our narrative is not being listened. So both are blaming. Usually it is said at least one has to be right. If Pakistan is supporting Taliban and Haqqani, that means Pakistan is siding not with infidels, but with Muslims. So why is tariq -e taliban Pakistan fighting us? And if Pakistan was supporting Taliban and Haqqanis, why Pakistan could not use them to stop TTP not to fight with us? So we are into a jigsaw puzzle. And we would request you for your understanding. Because we feel that Pakistan is morally a correct country and is on the right side of the history. There are many reasons why we are not succeeding in Afghanistan, but I don't want to dwell on that. Because we are not the people to be part of the blame game. We don't want to blame anyone. To concern of everyone, Afghanistan is in step. So this was the narrative, but let's not go into it. Honorable President of Afghanistan has already offered peace. He's giving peace a chance. So we all need to support him. Now, we come to our region and now let's try and find some common opportunities for which you have to rise beyond Central Asian Republics and we have to rise beyond Pakistan and look at the whole of the world. Let's zoom out and let's look at this world from the top. And I want to highlight for you the population. If you look at the population, Asia is nearly 60%. Europe 9%. After Asia, Africa is 16%. America, North America 4.8%. South America 8.5 and Australia 0.5%.
If this is the population, and if famously it is said, love is where the heart is, so where are the people of this world living and residing? And if you connect this Asia with Europe, so you will feel that they are already connected by land and this region, Eurasia, makes 70% of the people. So I feel that the world is here. The world order which has prevailed has to come to be natural because we have the maximum resource here, human resource. We have maximum consumer markets. We have all the manufacturing. We have all the natural resources. We have all the development scope and connectivity potential. So if this is the world, let's try and locate the best place in this world. And I want to draw your attention towards the connectivity that is possible in this world. And I want you to indulge with me and let's play that crisscross and let's try and connect these regions. You combine Europe with North America, how many people do you connect? You combine Europe with South America, how many people do you connect? So what is this connectivity? Because the world is in Eurasia. All others are very far. And even if you connect them, you are connecting very less percentage of people. And if you come to Eurasia or Asia, what is it that you find? The Pacific is too far from where China, Japan, South Korea gets an opening and they can also be blocked at state of Malacca. So virtually the north is frozen of this world. From where do you connect? And how do you connect this world? So then you realize that it is Indian Ocean which is the main conduit of this world. So through this Indian Ocean, let's try and reach out to the complete region. Okay, the three countries, main countries, India, Pakistan and Iran, in, in the Indian Ocean, which give you access to Indian Ocean. Now if you first go to India, can you go to Central Asian Republics? No. If you go to Iran, can you go to China? No. So within this larger part of the world, the connectivity that I am referring to Ladies and gentlemen, all the roads come to and go from Pakistan. Pakistan is one uniquely placed country that if you come to Pakistan, you can go anywhere. So we are Pakistan is a country which is providing the largest bridge or the connectivity to the two worlds. <coughs> Please do remember the north is frozen, Pacific is too far and this region is connectivity. How this region multiplies? So Pakistan has a great role into this. But our love story 
continues. Just look at this love story. How are we located? We are all connected. You are located in the heart of brothers and friends. The connectivity is afforded through Pakistan. I would like to say Pakistan is also a land of love and opportunities for Central Asian Republics. Virtually, our relationship with Central Asian public is part of divine management. Just look at this map. How at one time there was USSR. So all the Central Asian Republics which became independent had the same religion. And we were located together. But the story doesn't end here. But I'm pointing out that it's the divine management that wants to see us together. And how can we be away? But the story doesn't end here. Look at the future economic block. Who is emerging economy? U.S., West, everyone has a saturated economy. Like I said, we are the world. We are a future economic block. And within this future economic block, where are Central Asian Republics? So you, and Pakistan, we are part of the new economic block. And if you want any proof, what is this bridge and road initiative? So, we found the best place in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, now let's find the best region in the world. Just to refer, with all that connectivity, everyone loves his homeland, loves his country, but let's choose the best region in this whole of the world. Where would you like to put your finger to? I would like to put my finger here. All the green countries, shown green. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Muslim world. In the north is Central Asian Republics. Somewhere lower is Pakistan. And then the Middle East. Arab world and North Africa. Only Indonesia, Malaysia, they are out of it. Or maybe Bangladesh. Just look at this one contiguous, continuous block. We don't realize that the divine management has put us together here. Who are the richest countries? in terms of resources. Where are the resources? Central Asian Republics, the Arab world, which is feeding the energy of whole of this world. Ladies and gentlemen, in the entire globe, this is the best region, this is the best part, where all the Muslims are there. So who has to take care of this poor and crumbling world and we call it Islamic world and I do feel that this is the best part of the world 
where we have everything. So from best place, best countries, best region. So within our vision we have to encompass this also. Please do not lose sight of this. And within, with all what I have said, Pakistan is to rise, is to rise beyond CPAC even. And the connectivity that we are into the process of embracing. Pakistan has to extend itself to the nearest Africa through Somalia. That is where our ships must reach to. And that is how we take care and partner this part of the world. Just see, ladies and gentlemen, how suitably we are located to achieve this. So your vision should not scuttle you somewhere around within your country, a two countries plus, but all of us, we have to rise beyond the region. And just look at it, how blessed we are that we are so friendly, take our life if you want to. This is how we feel for our brothers from Central Asian Republics. You have no resistance, ask for anything. So much of data has been presented to you. So we all become a massive trade corridor. This is our option. This is what will alter the region. And if I refer to Pakistan, if Pakistan can become a massive trade corridor, it can also become a massive trade hub, obviously. It can also become a massive economic hub. If that be it, Pakistan will be a massive industrial hub. And Pakistan has such a capacity, the larger province, the largest province of Pakistan, Lochistan, can accommodate everyone for their industry. We can declare that as an industrial province. Referring to Blochistan only, Blochistan can, can come up with eight common border markets with Iran and Afghanistan. Blochistan has maximum fisheries. Blochistan has and can have maximum livestock. Blochistan has maximum fruits. Blochistan has maximum wind energy. Blochistan has maximum solar energy. Blochistan has maximum coal power generation. And ask any country to come up with four more international cities, Blochistan can, up, can come up, Pakistan can, up, can come up with four more international cities at the coastline. We have such a tremendous capacity. We can create four Dubais here and we have trillion dollars riches. And till such time that Afghanistan is not stabilized, let's work on this. This is the shortcut that I mentioned to you in the morning. And we are already working on this. So ladies and gentlemen, all those who have come from Central Asian Republics, what do you carry with you when you go back? The outlook of a Pakistan, which is strategically partner of China, Central Asian Republics, Russia, and is a gateway, totally cooperative and economic outlook, progressive country. We are a country of the future. We are a power to reckon with. 
प्लीज डोंट मिस इट एंड जस्ट विथ ऑल द मेच्योरिटी क्रेडिबिलिटी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी लेट मी टेल यू वी आर ऑल्सो अ न्यूक्लियर पावर so if you look at the whole thing resource rich central asian republics are also a land of opportunities they only await security sustainable development and connectivity indeed we have everything we have huge economic potential we have huge connectivity potential we have to have a way of cooperation and we have to have a way of collaboration ladies and gentlemen oh we have a great region and great people alhamdulillah collectively we can say this fabi ayy rabbi arad rabbi kuma tuqsa and to all of you i would like to say the new sun of our progression is rising let's all rise too i will show you a movie clip about pakistan and is a bit of old a movie is pre 28 july but then it has a good message it will give you some good idea on pakistan i can't tell you your fortune but i can tell you what right. fortune i started in the light dim kar i have a trillion dollars worth of minerals buried right under my soil and coal reserves that can keep burning for 500 years even my salt mines are worth gold because they are second largest in the world i have all the right connections with the world's deepest seaport connecting to one of the world's highest roads and leading to one of the world's oldest train routes You can always bank on me because my banking industry turned over 36% in profit and my stock market was number 3 in the world. I am also the world's bread basket, the fourth largest producer of rice, mangoes and cotton, and the fifth largest producer of milk, sugarcane and dates. from precision instruments that read your heart to fabric that adorns the sleekest fashion shops from a tiny mastic to a roaring jet fighter and maybe even the t-shirt you're wearing i am everybody Bismillahirrahmanirrahim I just had to come up on the stage there was so much of talk about love 
General Janju has got us all romantic, I am sure. We must also remember that this is a very old love story. This is not a new love story. It started in the Middle Ages when Chinggis Khan connected East and West right up to the Volga River. That was the time when the appetite of the West was whetted and they looked towards the East for trade and for everything and they started looking for routes. So Chinggis Khan, another point, nature intended for us, ladies and gentlemen, to be interconnected. You may be knowing that after every 200, after every 200 male in the world, one is a descendant of Chinggis Khan. In a group of 200 males, one is a descendant of Chinggis Khan. So this is our nature intended for us to be interconnected. And this is an old love story. We are just reviving it. And thank you very much, General Janjua, for making us romantic and reminding us of all this. And I, once again, I must thank General Janjua, the Secretary, Mr. Iftikhar, the entire team of the CGSS for working so hard in making this a great success. And we hope that this is the first step towards more integration between the CARs and Pakistan. We have also lined up a number of meetings uh, with ministries and so on and so forth, and which will help all of us in getting together. And this was the aim of the uh, seminar. So thank you very much. I believe because of the shortage of time, uh, they, the, we can do away with the question answer session. Although I'm, I know that a lot of people were uh, are very keen on asking questions, but I know that some of the delegations have to go to the embassies for uh, meetings. So uh, thank you very much. I'll hand you over again to the moderator. Thank you so much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to request again Lieutenant General Nasser Khan Janjua, Hilal and